set arbitrary parameters that, that challenge you in this way too. Like let's say for example, <clears throat> let's stay on, uh, let's try the high E string again, but let's do it and stay between the fifth <clears throat> and ninth fret. We can use the fifth and ninth fret and anything in between, but nothing outside that little box. Let's start <clears throat> with the lowest possible note on the high E string for an F chord. <clears throat> what would that be? <clears throat> it's got to be a chord tone. Mm -hmm. F minor. Yep. It's got to be between these two frets. Between the fifth and ninth fret. This we got all this space. One of those. Yep, high E string. There you go. Nice. That's the fifth. All right. And next we have a B flat. So what what what, what can you do? That's right, the root. And then we have an E flat. So what can you do? Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could do that. Another option would be you could do the flat seven. You know, which would be the ninth fret. Either one's good. All right. Next we have an A flat major seven chord. So what can you do? We have D flat major seven. Yep, major seven. You could also have done the ninth fret for the root. Either one's good. But anyway, that's the idea. So you can do that. Uh, you could do that. I mean, you could do that for a long time. You could do it between. You could set different parameters. Like now, I need to stay between the. Uh, 7th and 12th fret, or now I need to stay between the 3rd and 5th fret, but I'm allowed to use the G and high E string or something. Uh, naturally there you won't have quite the same voice leading because you'll be jumping between between the strings, but it'll still, it's, it's getting you to become aware of like where all your tones are, where your roots are, your thirds, your fifths, and that helps when you want to play something with better voice leading, like just for example, if I did F minor, I'm just going to noodle around for a moment, F minor, and let's say I go. I play the root, the fifth, and the minor third. And then to the B flat minor. All I had to do was change one note to make it happen, and that's what good voice singing sounds like. And then let's say I got the next one. So that's a good example right there. I did E E minor seven or E seven sharp nine, which I'm skipping a third because I'm limited to the strings I'm using. And then with a regular third, and instead of going like this, which would have been bad voice leading, or this, which would have been a little better but still not good, I instead did this. That's good voice leading. You see what I'm talking about? 
It's funny. It's funny you say clean, because it sounds like you could mean it in the way that I I use the word clean. When you say clean, how do you mean it? Yes, like it belonged. Yeah, it's it. You know what it is? It's clean is like the sort of in my the way I use it, and I think the way you use it too. Um, it's um, it sounds rational, is what it sounds like. It makes sense, and so then in our minds, that's clean. And the other word I use is wholesome. Yeah, like uh, upright. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and that's, by the way, why I like box music so much. It's like the voice leading master and the way you'll change key and stuff. And it's so, that's so unreal, man. I recommend checking his stuff out for voice leading stuff. It's ridiculous. I mean, you don't have to learn it, but just like hearing it, you're going to be like, it's mystifying. How, uh, or maybe the opposite. It's unmystifying, if that makes sense. It's just, it's so clear and good. It's good. Anyway, man, do you have any questions? Well, uh, there's there's an inversion for every chord tone. So there's a minimum of two invert. I mean, there's a root position and then the rest are inversions. So like in a triad, there's three notes. One of them is going to be root position, and that means that you can have two different inversions. If it's a seventh chord, you've got four notes. That means the root position, and then you can have three inversions. The third inversion is the one with the seven in the root, and that's the one, the seven is the base, rather. A root is a root. Uh, the seven in the bass, and that's one that's really tense because the seven is like a borderline, you know, it could be scale tone or it could be chord tone depending on like, um, I mean, technically people say it's a chord tone, but it sounds like a scale tone sometimes. It depends on the context. You know, if you go to a country gig and they're doing their triads and you play major seven and just like end on it like it's the end of the song, to them it's going to be like, that's not where you're supposed to end. You're supposed to go home to a chord tone because it sounds like a scale tone to them. Um, 